Hey, good Wel evening. Welcome to Arizona. Good evening, everybody. It is uh, Friday the 18th, and we are uh, live from Arizona doing our normal Friday night thing. We've got, uh, I got several really good questions I think might be helpful for you guys. We've got a, a giveaway, I guess we can show you, and um, yeah, we're going to wait till a few people get in here, but um, we've had a really good week. Thank you guys for all of the great comments on the on the Facebooks and the YouTube. By the way, as far as Facebook goes, I'm sorry I haven't gone in there and, and uh, liked all of the comments on the two Facebook Lives that we've done. But um, I will take care of that hopefully tonight. And um, so we're on YouTube Live tonight. And... Uh, Things have been going good. In case you guys didn't know, this week was it was it early this week or early la or late last week where we hit forty thousand subscribers on YouTube. So thank you guys and thank. I know we have a lot of new people watching, so we want to uh, say thank you. We appreciate you watching. And again, as always, if you have questions, you can always reach out. And email me, eric at makerwoodsign.com, and I'm happy to answer any of your questions um, that I'm able. Um, Jeff Dale. Hey, Jeff. So they've just reached three hundred five hundred and thirty eight dollars for the... Oh, terrific. Yeah, that's that's awesome. great news, Jeff. He's doing a, a fundraiser, auctioning off sign kind of doing a raffle. Great. So great. they've raised right now uh, five hundred and... I think $30 wow. or something. That's terrific, so, Jeff. And yeah. so what are they raffling off? A sign that he made, but oh. it's for, to help uh, some of the um, people that had been hit by catastrophe or whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah it's, that's it's good. 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 But it's a, it's a cool sign. It's a, a flag with an eagle, um, eagle on it, freehand yeah. uh, routed it's flag with an eagle right. on it. So I bought, a, nice. I bought a few tickets. So. I did, too. Did you? Yep. Yep. Um Okay, we got some people in here. Yeah. Get on with the, get on with the program here. So. Show the giveaway. Yes. So here's a giveaway again, from our buddy Danny Meadows, uh, motion sensor nightlight. I unfortunately I can't. Uh, I'm not going to take them out of the package and actually demo them. Yeah, I was uh, I was reading on it, and it says uh, place anywhere. It's got. It's got these little 3M uh, mounting tape squares on the back, and it says they take three AAA batteries, and it says also nine batteries included. That means they're they're in there. The batteries are already in there. You don't have to go out and buy batteries for it. So it's uh, it's great. Very cool. Yeah. So there's three uh, of them in there. It activates with the motion. Uh, in darkness, if it's dark, they're motion activated. And so there, there's three, you said. There's three of them. Yeah. There's three of them. In yeah. There. See, there's that's two a, and one. That's a heck of a giveaway. Yeah. Th thanks, Denny. I think I'll go on your website and buy some of those for myself. So um, I'm going to show Danny all of Danny's information here uh, at the end when we give that away here for a. Great cr trivia question that Vicky came up with. So you guys will hear that in a few minutes. So uh, first question, uh, are we ready to go into my stuff? Okay, so first question is uh, from Mike. He says, what's the shallowest cut I can make with a profile bit on a cedar dog-eared plank wood? So the cedar fencing. Uh, and not lose a line when I go to sand it. Um, that's his first question. So, in regards to that, Mike, I would say probably, I don't know, 330 seconds. Um, what do you think, Dad? What's, what's the shallowest he can go and not sand out the detail? Probably. Uh, I'd say an eighth of an inch. Maybe an eighth of yeah. an inch. Maybe yeah, an probably eighth an eighth of an inch. Of an inch. But I recommend carving it at, at no less than 187, uh, but that's. So, you know, if you're going to make a real shallow cut, I wouldn't go less than an eighth of an inch. So here's the thing with that, uh, and a couple things come to mind. 
is if you have, uh, if you want to use the profile bit and you go an eighth of an inch, um, just, you know, have a light hand with that sander because, uh, you know, these sanders that, you know, whether you're using a belt sander or whether you're using the disc sander like we use now, you've got to have a light touch with that thing. I sanded off the sign today. In fact, I'm going to show it in a minute. And uh, you, you really have to have a light touch with it. So um, that's the first thing. The second thing is if this is, um, and uh, if, it, if it's bothering you that you think you might lose the detail because you're not going deep enough, but you can't go deeper because of the fineness of the line of what it is you're cutting, then, uh, and that's with the profile bit, then um, switch over to the carving liner. See, guys, I, I picked these bits. We, we designed and, and, well, Dad designed the profile bit, but we use the bits that we use because you can go deep enough and still have a fine enough line that you won't lose it. So if, if you're using the profile bit and you can only go an eighth of an inch deep because the, um, or maybe even a sixteenth deep because the, the width of the, uh, of the cutter, then drop down to the carving liner. You will get a lot deeper with the carving liner than you can with the profile bit for the same width. Yeah, the carving liner is really intended for really detailed graphics. Uh, the profile bit will work on probably 90% of it, but the carving liner, the other 10%, you can get real fine lines and do a lot of, uh, of detailed graphic work that you can't do with uh, with any other bit. So if you're if you're um, if you're concerned that you're not going deep enough with the profile bit, and um, and and you think that line might sand out, then switch over to the carving liner bit. I just typed the wrong date. It'll be just, uh, fixed when uh, we'll edit it and I'll fix it. Don't worry. No worries. Yeah, I always uh, edit those things. I put eleven eighteen instead of twelve eighteen. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Um, um, so I have a question. Yeah. From I R Dennis, do you have a one two three do this list? You know a one two three how to do it list. Um. Well, I've got videos on the whole process step by step by step by step. In fact. We've got a, um, on the website, you'll see a link. There's a big picture of me doing something. And right under there, there's a box that says seven, uh, what is it? Seven steps, seven, seven steps, steps to sign steps. carving basics. That's probably your, that's seven or it's actually eight different videos taking you step by step through the process. I think that's probably as good as any place to go. Um, oh, hello. Oh, forgot to turn the light on. Yeah. So that's what I would suggest. Go to the website, makeawoodsign.com, and click on the seven steps. And uh, there's uh, actually eight different videos in there that takes you from picking out the board all the way through the finishing process. I really think that's probably the best place to start. And I've had, I was just looking at it today, almost 500 people have taken that uh taking that course it's all it's free yeah it doesn't cost um, anything back in the old days when we first started this we had a set of videos uh, on you know vhs uh, video format uh, and we and we sold them we charged for them but over a period of time we slowly got into where our channel now is just to help people out uh, we make patterns for laying out signs but for teaching people how to do it, we don't charge for that. All right. Um, we have another question. Speaking of bits, when do you know or should know when it's time to get them sharpened? <laughs> that funny thing you say is that was another uh, another question here. Um, on a video that I just did recently, I got a, a comment from Bruce, Bruce Peter, one of our good friends that we've actually has been here and anyway Bruce is a great guy and he said um, a bit of constructive criticism at 855 on video number 531 I know that's kind of confusing 
um, you said your cutter needs to be sharpened, but you never explained how or why uh, you came to that conclusion. Just something uh, a beginner might find useful. So that goes right along with another thing that I that's wanted a good to talk point. about. Yeah. Um, so I did say on that, uh, that's when I was carving a piece of poplar. And my 60 degree bit that I was using, I made a comment as soon as the router stopped, I made a comment at exactly 855 that uh, my, my router bit needed to be sharpened. And I didn't go into why. Well, uh, there's, um, I think, uh, you know, Dad and I have two different ways that we can um, use to judge whether a bit is dull. But the first indication that I get a, that a bit is dull is it gets harder to pull through the wood. That literally is it. I mean, it's just as simple as that. If, it, if it's all of a sudden just seems harder to pull through the wood, um, that is an indication that it could be dull. Now, that could be just that piece of wood. A second indication is that you can't hold a straight line. Maybe this bit that you're using, maybe, you know, when you first started using it, you could hold a pretty good line. But all of a sudden, now you can't seem to pull a, a straight line on it. That's another indication that the bit might be dull. Uh, third indication is uh, maybe it's getting, it's burring around the surface of the board and it's throwing a burr. Um, or, or maybe even burning, if you're cutting hardwoods, maybe it's even burning down in the cut a little bit. That's another indication. And if it's burning, it'll, it'll throw smoke off. If it's a dull bit, it'll, it'll actually smoke. Yeah. Um, fourth indication is if you go and, um, and you watch video Coffee and Questions 12, 13, 17, I go into, that's a video uh, completely dedicated to how to tell when your router bit is dull. And uh, the biggest way that I find by just looking at it without because I, I sharpen bits almost every day. And the bits that people send me to sharpen, I can look at them underneath my cheaters, my magnifiers, and I can look at it and tell if it's dull. Basically, you know, go watch Coffee and Questions 12 slash 13 slash 17. But basically, if the grind on the, on the flute, if it's shiny, completely to the edge, to the edge of the bit, chances are it's not dull. But if it's shiny right up to the edge, but then there's another sliver of shininess separate from that right on the edge, chances are it's rolled over if you look at it in a microscope, and that's a dull bit. Stephen Frum says, is Dave giving Eric the I don't believe you look? I don't know. No, no, he's <laughs> I know not. You, I'm looking at you, and you're looking at him, and it kind of gives you that. <laughs> oh. No, that's uh, every tip that he gives you Oops, is sorry, guys. is just is just what you need to know. If through my experience, if there's something that he doesn't mention or I think should be added to what he tells you. I'll just uh, I'll, I'll butt in and and uh, and tell you, but listen to what he says because everything he says is is what you need to know in order to be a better sign cutter. Well, thank you, Dad. Jeff Dale says, Eric, thank you for the advice on the one shot paint. Got it on order today. Good things are coming. Excellent. Good, good, good. You're welcome, Jeff. Happy to help. Um, Anyway, so, you know, it, it's mostly common sense. Another thing, guys, make sure, and, you know, we say this on a regular basis, clean your router bits. If you, if you see any buildup on those router bits at all, this is something that Dad taught me actually only, I don't know, five, six, seven years ago, um, that if you get buildup on that router bit, um, that's going to cause it to not cut like it should. That doesn't necessarily mean that the edge is dull, but the edge will get dull if you don't keep those router bits clean because it will build up heat. And then the heat is a, is a huge factor in keeping your edges sharp. Yeah, and you can clean your bits with a little, little uh, brass wire brush in a Dremel tool. 
I'll be sure and wear glasses because every once in a while one of those little bristles will come off. But the brass brush won't affect the cutting edge of the router at all. Uh, it's so much softer than carbide, but it'll clean all the residue, all the, the burnt pitch or anything that builds up on that router bit. That brass brush will clean it off using a little Dremel tool. So, and, 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 and that's a good way to clean them. And if you don't have a Dremel tool and you've got just a, a little hand brass brush that most of us picked up down at Harbor Freight, you know, three of them for a couple bucks, if you have just a hand um, brass brush, uh, uh, warm soapy water and, uh, and that brass brush, that'll clean that stuff right off too. Yeah, and you can use it if you got acetone, something like that, a solvent. Uh, that'll sometimes that'll clean them, but they really need kind of a little a little metal brush on there just to make sure all that residue is cleaned off. Stephen from says spin, Eric spin. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. I use this thing all the time. Keeps me uh, from pounding on the table. I got my hearing aid in. I can hear it spinning. <laughs> so uh, let's see what else was there. C C scroller. <coughs> Evening from Cambridge, Ontario. Oh. Did you say DC? TCS scroller. -E yeah, TC scroller. He's a uh, uh, scroller. Yeah. Yeah. That. How you doing, TC? Thanks for watching. Clear All right, up guys, give from, us some more thumbs up. From uh, and I can read the trivia Canada. Um, oh, and then another thing. Uh, yeah, that that pretty much is those two questions. But then there was another one. Todd Renshaw is trying to figure out how he how he wants to mark his boards. He said that he tried a, a paper label and put lacquer over it, but it kept peeling up and it was kind of a pain. So, um, what do you mean mark his board? Well, identify the back of your oh. signs. Um, and we back in the back way back when uh, we had little uh, gold foil labels that we used to put on there. Uh, but I found that those just didn't last. They just didn't stay on there very long. And then I bought a little uh, burner uh, with a hot stamp that it actually burned it right into the board. That's an excellent way to do it. It's electric. Uh, if you want to put it in a grill press or something, you can put your board in there and just do as many of them as you want. Or you can get it handheld. Just plug it in, let it get hot. Yeah, and, uh, and brand your board. The, the brands yeah. are really popular yeah, these brands days. Are popular. Yeah, and some people and they don't cost much. I think, I think you can get you can get your brand, your name, even your logo if you want it, uh, and the branding iron, the whole thing for probably around fifty bucks. Uh, yeah, and I think that some people actually um, uh, don't buy the electric ones. They just buy the brand with a handle, and then they just heat it up with a butane torch. That's true. <laughs> And do it I've that way. That yeah. If you want to so, really get fancy, you spend twenty thousand dollars and buy a laser and then do it with a laser. Yeah. But, or you uh, can that's, just go and get a stamp and stamp on the I back. always used a rubber stamp and that that was my preferred way. Um, that way I knew it was gonna be there. Uh, because a lot of times and especially I you know, I kinda go back I always go back to the fact that I was carving signs on site and the the back of the board I'd always uh, sand off the back of the board as I was finishing the sign. I sanded off the back of the board, had my stamp right there, turned it over, sanded off the front, and then the sign was done. I handed it, finished it, and then handed it to, to the customer. So I needed something that I could use right out there on site. Um, but if you're just working in a workshop, a brand is absolutely a, a good way to go. Um, and it, it's kind of cool, kind of unique. Uh, but I used a rubber stamp for tens of thousands of signs, and it worked really, really well. Um, some people, I've seen some people actually take their business card and staple it right to the back of their sign. Yeah, that's better than nothing. You, you definitely want to have your identification on the back of your work whenever possible um, if you want to sell more stuff. Renee says she tapes business cards to the back of her sign. Yeah. Is that my sister? It is. Hi, sis. Hi, daughter. Did you see what she, you saw what uh, her and Steve sent us, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, we love this snow globe. 
Uh, excited for you. They're going to uh, Hawaii on Sunday. Oh, Her great. and Steve are going to see Jimmy and uh, Susie. Susie, yeah. So uh, yeah, I got a I got a box of candy from Jimmy and Susie today. Oh, yeah, yeah we, we did too. We all too. got ornaments and candy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so anyway, that uh, that was by Todd Renshaw. He wanted to know how most people were uh, identifying the back of their work, their signs. So, um, yeah, that's about it. A friend brands on a disc and then drills a hole to set the disc in. I think it's called a coin brand. I've seen that before. It's a, it's like a coin. They have stamped with their logo or something. Oh, and then they inset it. They like no, it. Scott never did. So then they like make a depression on the back of the sign, like with a Forstner bit, and uh, that's an interesting way yeah. to do it. Yeah, that's it's kind of good. Sounds like a cool way to do it. I on a lot of the big co um, collaborations that I did for other YouTubers and other Instagrammers, when I had a, a sign that was too big to fit in the laser, I would make a little plaque, a little laser plaque that would give all my information, then I literally would glue that right to the back of the sign. I did that quite a bit. So I always made sure on all of those I had a, a nice identification on the back of those signs. Okay, uh, yeah, let's get into the... Uh, so Vicky says we need, we more, need more thumbs up more and, thumbs up and more question. likes, guys. Please give us some thumbs up and likes and shares and... Uh, what does that do for us with a thumbs up? It, just, uh, it, it, it sets you up on the algorithms. It's just a... It tells YouTube that you're putting out the content. The thumbs up got to be up in the top. Unfortunately, just put, doing thumbs up on the comments doesn't work. Uh, it, yeah, it tells YouTube that, you're, um, that your content is that liked by people, people yeah, that people, people like it. People are participating in liking yeah. it. Okay, good, good. All right. Yeah. I'm gonna these these two are the ones that does all of this filming and and Facebook and YouTube stuff. I just go along for the ride. So there's a lot I don't even know about it. Oh, there's tons I don't know, but we're working on that. Yeah. There's a there's something that's called best practices within the YouTube uh, platform, and um, I'm gonna learn Andre more about that. Andre de Cavallo. Andre? Hello from Portugal. Oh, hi, yeah. Andre. Uh, thank you for joining us. Clear from Portugal. Wow. wow. That's the other side of the world for sure. Okay. That's crazy. Okay. Okay. Vicky's reading. All right, reading. guys, I'm going to do the, I'm going to do the trivia question. So, so this is, ready? this is for, uh, unfortunately domestic only. Sorry, Andre over in Portugal. You can't win this. This is, uh, for domestic people only because the shipping is just uh, crazy. Okay. So in 1823, uh -oh. a poet named Clement Clark Moore wrote a poem, A Visit from St. Nicholas. And it was it's a, actually better known as A Night Before Christmas. So he named eight reindeer, Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Donner, and Blitzen. But in 1823, Two of those names were different. They were the original reindeer's names. That's what I want you to know. I'm going to give you a hint. I'm going to give you the first six. Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, and Cupid. Those are the original names. So two of them had different names. It was Donner and Blitzen are not the original names. What are the original names? Ooh. That's a tough she, one. She let you guys off the hook because she was going to ask it differently. So that's uh, that's a good question, though. It is a good question. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> spelling has got to be right, guys. You gotta guys are so close. Exact spelling. Exact spelling. Gotta be sure I'm talking about Danny. That is the meaning of the two words, Tessa. The meaning of the two words. Cheryl Jameson. Hey, Cheryl. Uh, nope, that's not right, Cheryl. Oh, sorry. 
I guess the Spelling sound has to be right. I guess the sound is working. I guess. We've been having some issues with the sound lately. I don't know why, but. Yeah, I have watched your video that you guys made where you discussed the sound, and the sound was great. Oh, was it? Oh. Donner and Blitzen was the name that they were changed to. You guys are close, but you're not spelling it right. It's got to be spelled right. Oh. I'll give you a hint. It is not Dunder. Probably spell check within their uh, Close, Tessa. their phones and stuff. Probably spell check. I had that spell check sometimes. It won't let you sometimes correct what you're spelling. You know, it, it won't let you correct. It will not only misspell it or whatever, get, make it a different word, but sometimes it it will highlight. At least it does on my phone to where I can't go back. It's just a pain in the butt to go back and uh, spell it the way I want to spell it. It's not being spelled right. Oh, wait a minute here. Nope. Uh-oh. Wow, it's a tough one. You got some of it spelled right, but not all of it. Come on, guys. All right. All right. So it's Rob Duberstein. Rob. It's Donder, D O N D E R, and Blixem, B L I X E M. Rob Duberstein got it? Yep. Oh. Good for you, Rob. That was a tough one. You want me to write that down? Hey, a lot you? of them had, were close, but they spelt it D U N. And it's not D-U-N, it's D-O-N. All right, Rob. I'll get those shipped out to you in the morning, Rob. Congratulations. Renee says Bill and Ted. Bill and Ted. <laughs> Some of um, the answers were, uh, let's see, Sounder and Blixen. Sounder? Donder and Blixen. It wasn't spelled right. Oh, wait a minute. Let me see that. Oh, you want this? Okay, so um, I want to give one last shout out to Danny Meadows, and uh, this is where you guys can go to check out his eBay store, uh, Jim Price Parts, and when you get to this address, then click right here, and that will take you to the store, and there's, gosh, I think there's hundreds of different Nebo products in there, some really, really cool stuff, flashlights and just just tons of cool stuff we uh oh yeah we gave that uh that big fluorescent so uh we just got sorry a about that there was a phone call that came through so hopefully that won't uh that won't throw it off too much but anyway yes guys please uh if you're interested in flashlight or nebo products please go and uh give jim uh, or <laughs> Give Danny some business over at Jim Price Parts. So um, every email that I send out on Sunday, it's got that at, in that email too. So if you need a link to it, it's right in the email Terry, on Sunday. Terry, uh, you need to call me. I, I, Terry, send me an email, Terry. I'll send you one. Okay. Um, Vicki and I will be live tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., Arizona time, that's mountain time, over on Facebook. So, uh, and then we'll have a senior moment on Sunday. That'll be Dad's senior moment. And Monday, a brand new video, project video, which is something I've never done before. Sorry, guys, the screen went back black because we got a phone call. So we're going to just wrap it up. Okay. Black screen, apparently. Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry, guys. Um, all right, guys, that's it. Andre from Portugal said he's a design student and he loves to work. Thank you, Andre. Appreciate that. I so, appreciate you. Appreciate you being with us on our on our uh, on our our, our uh, video presentations. Okay.
So um, if you guys if you guys have any questions at all, email me, eric at makeawoodsign.com, and we'll see you tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Mountain Time, over on Facebook. And uh, that is uh, that is it for tonight. Hope you guys have a great weekend. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Bye. Christmas.